When we're talking about building lower back resilience, we need to make sure first that we can move. And once we can show our body that it's safe and it's okay to move pain-free, then we're gonna to start to integrate lower resistance, easier, less complex exercises that are gonna help develop more strength and awareness over the muscles that help control what our pelvis, our hip, and our low back do together. The cat-cow exercise, we're gonna try and focus on bringing our spine into flexion and extension, both extremes of spinal motion. At first, when we start doing this exercise, we wanna start with our wrist under our shoulder, knee under the hip, and we'll go into one extreme of motion all at once. So in this example right now, I'm doing flexion, or in other words, the cat pose. The opposite to this is the cow position or extension through the spine, where I'm trying to arch as much as I can through my back, looking up and lifting the tailbone. Now, as you get better at this exercise and you improve your awareness over your spine and you limit accessory motion, so for instance, not bending the elbows while you're going through or moving through the hips or swinging the body, you wanna try and break it down segmentally. So together, we can try doing this from the head all the way to the tailbone and then we'll reverse it back from the tailbone to the head. So we'll start by tucking our chin, rounding our upper back and separating our shoulder blades pulling our belly button toward the ceiling and starting to squeeze our abs, tucking the glute or tucking the tailbone and squeezing the glutes. And now that we're in the full on cat pose or in flexion, we'll start by reversing at the tailbone back to the head. We'll lift the tailbone toward the sky, relaxing the glutes, start to drop the abdomen or drop the belly and loosen it. Bring the shoulder blades down and back together. And last look up toward the ceiling to bring our spine into full extension. Be patient with this one and really try and maximize both extremes of motion. For the pelvic tuck exercise, we wanna focus on bringing awareness to our pelvic complex. I recommend bringing a towel or maybe a band, something that has just a little bit of uh, a thickness to it that you can place underneath the small of your back while you're in this position to bring awareness to what's happening in that area of your body. Lay down and place that towel underneath the small of your back, or in other words, the hollow area of your back when you're laying flat. With pelvic tucks, we'll leave our feet flat on the ground. We can use our hands if we need to on the ground to help brace our upper body. But what we wanna try and do is form an arch through our lower back as if allowing someone to slide their hand through that tunnel that you're forming in the hollow of your back. And then we're gonna try and push that section of our back toward the ground without causing pain or discomfort. In doing so, our pelvis is gonna be tucking returning backwards. If you imagine a bowl of soup right now, as I'm tucking, it's pouring out the backside of my body as my back is flattening. And then in the opposite direction, I'm pouring that bowl of soup out the front of my body, or in other words, forming a nice hollow arch through the low part of my back. The better you get at controlling this motion and the further extremes you can go without causing yourself discomfort, the better you're going to be at bringing awareness during bigger, greater compound lifts. In the dead bug exercise, we're gonna take what we know about the pelvic tuck and finding pelvic neutral, and take that and start to move our limbs while maintaining one pelvic position. What that looks like, if you take a towel and place it under the small of your back to bring some awareness to that area of your body, we'll start by bringing our knees up and our arms up in the air, hence the name dead bug, to this position. We're gonna try and find pelvic neutral. So what we don't want to happen is to push so hard into the ground with our lower back that we cause ourselves discomfort or that we start to see that the rest of our body is popping up off the ground. We want just enough pressure back here to also be felt up here in the abdomen. In fact, this is what's helping you get to this position. If we can maintain this position and breathe, the next advancement from here will be to just see if we can move one limb at a time and tap the ground. Right now I'm starting with just my arms. If I can continue to breathe while maintaining pelvic neutral and a strong braced abdomen, I'm gonna to start to try to lower my legs. Now you can do this by just keeping your knee bent and touching your heel to the ground or straightening out your leg like this. This will be a little bit harder because the lever's longer. If we can do this while breathing and keeping our brace, now we wanna to start to try to integrate opposite arm, opposite leg extensions. So I'm moving opposite limbs simultaneously while keeping the other two free limbs absolutely still. We wanna try and prevent any accessory movement in the free limbs 
while we're moving the two that we're focusing on. If you can complete that, the final step in your debug will be to try and do ipsilateral, or in other words, same side limb movement. If you can conquer all of these different movements while maintaining your brace and breathing, you're gonna be in great shape when you go to move to compound movements. The glute bridge is a really great exercise to help develop hip extension strength while maintaining a good, strong, braced abdomen and core, as we refer to it. You have a couple options for increasing your resistance, but let's just start body weight first. The setup for this will be down flat on your back with your knees bent, feet flat on the ground, and arms can stay by your sides to help brace your upper body. To perform a glute bridge, we wanna squeeze our glutes and squeeze our abdomen at the same time, lift our hips off the ground. What we should feel when we're in the top position is a nice, strong, tight squeeze through the glute muscles, a nice, strong brace through the abdomen. It's okay to feel, secondarily, some tension in your legs, particularly the top or the low part of your thigh, the back side of your thigh. If you can perform reps well here with no discomfort, and this feels easy, while you can continue breathing as well, we'll start to integrate some weight or resistance in the form of glute loop into the equation. If we're using weight, we start safely and scalably by turning on our side, cradling the dumbbell, rolling onto our back, keeping the dumbbell in a position where it's not crushing our pelvic bones or not causing us any kind of discomfort. In fact, if you push the weight toward your upper thigh, you'll be a lot more comfortable. And if we can perform this well, we can start to scale our weight up or include another form of resistance. For instance, a glute loop. If you're using a glute loop, place it right above your kneecaps at the low part of your thighs, lay back, and your goal is gonna to be to try and break that band. So with your feet no wider than shoulder width, we'll bridge up, we'll keep the band apart so that there's tension in it, and we'll return back to the floor keeping tension in the band every inch of the way up, down, and everything in between. Remember to breathe and scale your exercises slowly with time. Be patient. The farmer carry, one of my favorite functional exercises, really great at improving lower back resilience. While you're walking, you're gonna be keeping a nice, strong, rigid upper body with a strong grip, maintaining good breathing, so making sure that we're not holding our breath, or that we're not breathing too quickly while trying to walk somewhat casually and moving through the low body and maintaining a strong brace through the abdomen. There's a lot going on here that you might not catch if you just looked at this. We're also squeezing our shoulders really strong to help keep ourselves from shrugging up or otherwise using small muscles that would try and accomplish a big task. It's important not to overdo this one. So if you need to, as you're performing your reps, put your weights down, wait for your grip to recharge, come back onto those kettlebells, and go for another set. The hip hike is a really great exercise for helping develop quadratus lumborum strength and length. We also abbreviate that muscle QL, you might hear it. And it's also gonna work on the opposite side glute medius. So we're strengthening two really great muscles that help with lower back resilience at the same time. The side I'm gonna work on my QL is gonna be the side out here to my right. What I'm gonna try and do, much like in my shoulders if I'm shrugging my shoulders up and down, is I'm gonna hike that hip. So I'm gonna let it drop toward the ground and then I'm gonna pull it back up using the muscles right here underneath my rib cage that lean a little bit more toward my back. As I'm dropping, I'm also making sure not to completely collapse into this planted hip that's on the block. So I'm gonna strengthen and lengthen the QL. Here it's lengthened as I'm dropping. Here it's strengthened as I'm contracting and pulling that hip back up. And on the opposite side, as I'm dipping my leg down, I have to work really hard not to let my hip collapse like this. So I'm gonna strengthen these muscles as well. The combination of both of these muscles being strong and supportive in the hip complex is gonna help develop more resilience in the low back. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.